Please welcome back Ildiko and Yeti. This is uh, this film takes us in so many very uh, delicate places and also very extreme places. You know, I I feel it's so key that you have two lead actors that have such a careful you know careful touch and, and really are attuned to every little moment. Uh, could you talk about how you you found and and, and chose these these two to, to the two main actors? Um. um. Uh, Geza Marchani, who plays Andre, he's an uh, amateur. Uh, he was for 20 years the director of the biggest uh, literary publishing houses of, in Hungary. So not, so not an actor by profession? Uh, no, 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 no. And never ever thought about uh, acting in anything and he's not planning to continue this, <laughs> this career at all. Um, um, there are certain roles where you can work only with a professional actor. For example, it was Maria's role, mm -hmm. like that. But I knew that Andrew's role is 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 monolithic, and and the main um, point is is to have somebody with a very strong presence and um, a sort of credibility of the character, a sort of charm, a sort of secret. Um, so first of all, I needed a, a real personality. And uh, he was such a guy with an amazing, amazing sense of humor, great discipline, big deaths, many, many life experiences, not all of them very easy. Mm. So um, uh, he was very surprised when I asked him um, he asked me one night to think about, and I was really nervous because I have had no second choice. I, I didn't make any uh, casting session with anybody else. And even with him, I made one just to prove him that he can do it. So before that, I told already to my producers that we have, we have the guy. Yeah. And, and for, for, the, for, uh, the, for the actress? Yeah. For yeah. Alexandra, Alexandra, I wrote the role of the psychologist for her. I know her, I knew her from uh, theater school. Uh, I saw her in, um, in theater. She is playing in a very, very good, probably the, the best uh, theater in Budapest. Um, and she is a very, very, very different young lady. A very sexy, outspoken, hot chick, really. <laughs> and um, so uh, somehow the, the role of the psychologist fitted her perfectly. I casted uh, her for it. I asked her so she knew this and then for several months, for five months at least, I was uh, looking for Maria and I uh, asked her several times to come as a partner um, to help. Uh, and, um, and this idea came back to me again and again that I should try her because I trusted her talent and trusted that sort of real magic actors, only actors are able uh, to, and not the amateurs, they are uh, able to make other sorts of they magic. Their own magic, yeah. <laughs> to really transform themselves into somebody else. And um, it, it was just quite recently, by the way, during a Q&A that I realized what I was looking for and what I missed in all the other wonderful and absolutely talented actresses. This Maria is very vulnerable, but also very strong. She's a powerful person. And uh, I was looking for somebody who can be both in the same moment. 
not once vulnerable, once strong, but be completely vulnerable and strong in the same moment. And, and she was able, she, she really deeply understood the script, why I wrote it and so on, and she was an amazing partner. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's able to act with, on such a level of fine detail, just the particular look that she gives that character's eyes, you know, I mean, there, it's, it's sort of a, it's, there's a hardness and a softness in, in, in the eyes that she has, and you can tell that she kind of has a problem connecting, but she's absolutely sure and, and knowledgeable about other things. It's an interesting combination, yeah. Um, I, I, I also wanted to ask uh, about just the, the visual design of the film, which is, uh, also has a sort of precision to it. Uh, I mean, you know, the way you compose images, uh, you know, especially with her, she'll be peeking out a little bit or her feet will be picking out, peeking out. That's like the first time you see her. How do you, how do you go about doing that? Do you, do you storyboard in advance or do you like do with, with images or how do you work with the cinematographer in doing that? Um, he, was, he was an amazing partner at uh, the start of of the work we just made a deal not to go for a style uh, it would have made this film um, which was very sensitive um, in in the making uh, stiff and somehow it it would it wouldn't let you i don't know how it worked today but let you penetrate into the film and um, we just focused always on what we really want to say with that scene and we did one take in the scene and what is really the function of the scene in the whole. And um, it needs an unusual focus from a cinematographer and he was amazing in that, and not only him, but uh, many colleagues understood that uh, the tiniest detail, if it's not decided and chosen and executed uh, with the precision of, of, of the heart, how to say, uh, so not fitting to some style, but to fitting to, to the depths of, of that moment, then we, um, we don't have a, a bit weaker film, but we have a very, very bad film. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was always there, and I knew it in advance, and I told to my colleagues, this is a film like that. It, it works with, with that sort of margin, of safety margin, mm. that yeah. more or less all, all films have. But I, again and again, I was surprised how how sensitive it is. Um, so we, all of us, we had to focus, really. Yeah, no, I think you hit that sweet spot <laughs> with the style. Uh, I want to make sure the audience has, has a chance to, to uh, ask questions as well. Um, any questions from the audience? Yes. Oh, way in the back there? Yes, please. Okay. Did everyone hear about uh, hear this? It's uh, the question is about the idea of the shared dream of the deer. What, what was the thinking behind that? Um, I really don't know how it came to my mind. Uh, I just wanted to push these two characters into a situation when they are really forced out of their little shelter, which is also a prison cell. This little gray routine, daily routine, what they have, um, which is really miserable, but safe. And both of them take a risk. It's more visible, the risk, what Maria is taking, because she's wandering in an unknown territory, and she's making discoveries. But that one single step, what this man has to, to make, for me, it's as big as Maria's, because he knows very well what he is risking. He knows how painful um, it can be um, to be refused, um, uh, to open up towards another person and, and then uh, not being accepted. 
Um, so um, I thought, I really don't know how it came to my mind, but I thought, yes, this is something if you uh, realize one day that your neighbor, your colleague is dreaming the same dream f uh, for who knows how long, um, then you just can't go to work the next day and say, oh, hello. <laughs> and they have to do something. And from that moment when I had that idea, I really just had, I, I had the two characters in my mind. I, I had the feeling I, I know them very well. I, I didn't have to uh, construct them. Um, from that moment, I just had to watch them and write down what I see. Um, their reaction uh, to a situation and to the reaction of the other one. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's such a beautiful way of expressing that idea of how do you know if the other person feels the same way? <laughs> it's just a very nice way of, 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 of uh, illustrating that. Um, another question? Anyone? Uh, yeah, in the middle there. Uh, yeah, how did you shoot the scenes with the two, two deer? They're, they are very well cast as well, I think. <laughs> Well, um, it, it seems funny, but there was a deer casting, and uh, and I was really looking for Maria, for Alexandra, and for Andrea. Um, in the case of uh, of of Maria, um, Pizza is the name of the female deer. Um, you, th when you watch her, you think, yeah. It's just deer, all the deers are similar. But if there are 30, you would point immediately to her, yeah, this, this is her, this is Alexandra. Um, they are extremely different. And um, to tell the truth, we used lots of um, tiny tricks with, with the cinematographer um, to make you more receptive to their uh, special traits. The camera is never an, in an observing position uh, when, when we show the deers. Uh, it is a, a very, also the editing is that sort of invisible uh, editing, uh, Hollywood editing, what you use when you uh, shoot humans in interaction. There are lots of over the shoulder. And uh, for example, we, we shot everything with two cameras, very close to each other with different lenses. And then you can cut from a close up to a wider shot uh, or inverse uh, the same way as you make it with actors because you can ask an actor to repeat. So somehow unconsciously you, f you feel, yeah, they are, humans because, yeah. yeah, it is edited the same way as I'm used to watch humans. Yeah, uh, that's, that's fascinating. I, I, mean, <clears throat> I mean, you mentioned the editing uh, in those particular scenes, um, but I, I, throughout the movie, I was also really struck by the, the tempo of the film, which is this very uh, kind of gradual, uh, consistent uh, thing. That, that would, seems to be a high priority for you in, in, in putting it together, is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, again, I'm very uh, thankful to a colleague, to uh, the editor I worked with, um, because uh, this this sort of uh, um, the the tempo of the film is also a dramaturgical element, and in certain places for us when we worked on it. Uh, we also articulated it to ourselves, the, the exact meaning of, of that um, of that tempo. So, for example, also when when we show uh, these tough scenes at the not at the very beginning, uh, the slaughtering. You know, they they come to work. They uh, drink their little coffee and chit chat. They kill the animals. There is a, a break. They smoke a cigarette 
and there is just some little silly music from the radio and the, the cows and bulls are silently waiting that the killing continues. So it, it, is, uh, it is a very, it's a relentless um, um, rhythm and I didn't want to make a peak um, uh, when the killing is because it's, I think it's more serious this way. And it was the same time for the suicide. She goes home, she washes the dishes, she gathers the clothes uh, from the balcony, she breaks the door, she cuts her wrist. And, and again, no any... There's no huge climax or something? Yeah, like in the editing, because it doesn't need yeah. that sort of help. Yeah. Uh, By the way, jumping back, oh, yeah. it was six days shooting with, with the deers, but it needed several months of, uh, of preparation. First of all, with Goliath, the male one, who was an amateur, who never worked in <laughs> films, like <laughs> Pizza, uh, she worked in big American blockbusters. <laughs> Um, we can't, I have to know which film, which blockbuster was <laughs> it. Probably Red Sparrow or something, right? Uh, anyway, it was hard to convince the animal coordinator that we work with Goliath because it meant for him a several months long um, process to get Goliath um, to um, accept uh, first this animal coordinator, then us as a partner. Mm. You cannot tr train a deer, but you have to make them ac accept the closeness mm. and also somehow it's a partnership, but what was bad. Oh, fascinating. Uh, I think we're sort of running toward the end of our time. We have one more question. Uh, we can have time for one more question. Um, just if I miss you, just raise your hand high. Oh, there in the corner, there, yeah. Um, very consciously, I decided before we started the preparation not to ask the help of a psychologist because I wanted me and I wanted Alexandra, the actress, to approach Maria from a very different angle. And uh, it's probably my old life experience uh, which accumulated there um, it, it was a very, very quick writing, a very passionate, um, nearly automatic writing, and um, I didn't make research. And uh, for sure, before shooting, you think about perhaps I should ask the, uh, a specialist, and it was a very conscious decision not to. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I'm afraid that's all the time we have um, for. We um, have a, do we have time for one more quick question? Can we squeeze one in? Just here in the front. Yeah. Uh, the question is about oh. the apology uh, to Sandor and the, and the significance of that. Thank you. Thank you for this question. Um, uh, just today, I met um, an old friend from here, from New York. Um, and uh, I showed him the film half ready. And uh, he told me afterwards that was the first moment when uh, he apologized to, to Shandor that he was really deeply touched. Um, it's, um, it's so simple and it happens so rarely. And uh, it would just make our life so much more easy if we would do that, if we, if we wouldn't be ashamed to, to say, I'm sorry, sometimes. Um, and although the writing was really a very, very quick when I wrote the second draft, I mostly worked on the secondary characters because we don't follow their stories, but all of them 
can have such a big story secretly as Maria and Andrea. Okay, all right, well thank, thank you. you so much.